Hello everyone and welcome to the very first Friday New Product Post of 2014. Before we get started, I have a brief note that the Robotics 101 video will be postponed until next week due to the holidays, New Year's, and everything else. We just didn't have enough time to get it ready for this week, but be sure to check back next week. We'll have the third installment, which will be Linear Motion. So let's go check out the new products. First up, we've got a couple new breadboards to talk about. We have this one, and then we also have this huge one here. As you can see, this big one has pretty much all the attachment points anyone could ever possibly want. And this smaller one is one that you guys have been asking for for quite some time. This is the one that we've been carrying for a while, and you can see that it's actually just two of those connected together. And also has the detachable power rails, as you can see there. And this breadboard is actually several of these just connected together on one big metal plate with your four different little banana jack connectors. Next up, we've got a new camera module for the Raspberry Pi. This is the Pi Noir, or the No IR. This is very similar to the other camera module for the Raspberry Pi, except for this one has the IR filter removed. For those of you not familiar with the previous generation of this camera, there was actually a little infrared filter on top of the sensor. So what people were doing is they're actually taking this apart, removing the infrared filter to get an infrared spectrum camera. Well, what they did is they recognized a lot of people were doing this, a lot of people wanted it, so they decided to make one without the infrared filter, which is the Pi No IR. Next up, we've got several new products from Actobotics. These are the channel mount servo gearboxes. As you can see, they have a standard size servo motor, they have a couple different gears, and they have this outer framework, which allows you to mount the whole thing inside an Actobotics aluminum channel. So it makes mounting your servo and getting a little bit of extra power from the gear ratio pretty easy. We have them in several different varieties in three basic categories. We got them in a standard rotation, so it's just gonna match the rotation of your servo. We've got them in a 360 degree rotation, which is gonna give you a full loop all the way around. And then we also have them in continuous rotation, which actually takes away the feedback loop. So I'm going to start by showing you how to put together the standard rotation. Generally speaking, the standard rotation and the 360 degree are nearly identical. It comes with this section pre-assembled. And you can see that we've got a nice output shaft here. We've got the potentiometer on the bottom, and then we have this nice aluminum frame that holds everything together. In addition, we also have a couple of gears and also we've got the hub clamps down here. I'm gonna start with the Hi-Tech HS422 servo and show you how to install this. The servo already has a potentiometer in the bottom that it uses for the feedback positioning. Since we're actually gonna be transferring that to this potentiometer, we actually need to do some wiring and disassembly of the servo. So if you look at this one, we've got a one to five gear ratio. So that means for every one turn of this, we've got a five turn of that. So if this is 180 degree, this is gonna be significantly less than 180 degree. So we need to move the feedback from the servo over to the final output shaft. The first thing that we need to do is open up the servo and I'll show you where you need to connect the wires that go from here onto the external potentiometer. At the very bottom of the base, right down here, that's the control potentiometer. So once we clip these wires, we're actually gonna take them out of the case and solder them onto this potentiometer instead. So that just moves the control loop from inside to this drive shaft over into the final output drive shaft. The other thing that you might need to know is every servo is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be modified in a slightly different way. For this one in particular, there's no real room to move any of the wires on the outside. So it might be best to drill a small hole or something right there to give the wires room to come out. Now we need to connect the servo into this mounting block. It connects from the underneath side and the screws connect from the underneath as well. And at this time, it's a good idea to connect those wires that you brought out from the potentiometer. You can connect them in there now that they're close by. So we have the two gears here. One of them you can see has a spline on it that connects directly to here on the servo. So we're just gonna press that down. We'll screw that on later. And the other gear here goes on there with the aid of a clamping hub. So we're gonna have the clamping hub on the bottom, the gear in the middle, and then this hub adapter on top. And we're going to use the um, recessed screw holes like that. So now we've got our gear assembly that we're gonna put onto the output shaft. There we go. So that lines up well. 
So we're gonna add in the set screw that holds the hub clamp in place, but we're not gonna tighten it thoroughly just yet. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this servo in a little bit to mesh these gears a little bit better by undoing these four screws. I'm just using my thumb on the end of it to apply a little bit of pressure. At this point, we're almost done. The hub clamp isn't fully tightened, which actually allows us a little bit of play in the whole mechanism. So what we wanna do is we wanna do a frequency sweep with the servo so that we can see what the range of motion is, and then we can determine if we need to make any adjustments with this final output shaft. So let's say we wanna move from here to there or whatever, but it's off a little bit. We can actually use this little notch here to adjust that movement ever so slightly so that we get the correct range of motion. Then when our range of motion is complete, then we tighten down the hub clamp from below. Now it's tight and now we have a finished channel servo that we can fit directly into any of the Actobotics channels. We have all of these kits, whether it be the standard, the 360 degree, or the continuous rotation in five different gear ratios. So depending on what servo you're gonna use, you could actually get a lot of torque out of them, depending on you know your gear ratio and also the torque of your servo. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what the channel mount servo gearboxes are. And they're very useful for any time you need precise motion, but need a lot of power behind it.